Hey everyone, John Tesmer here, APQC. This is the second installment of the PCF Mailbag. This is the July 2014 edition, and I just want to say thank you for your support from the first mailbag. Lots of great questions have come in since then, and uh, we continue to have opportunities to work with people to help them understand what the PCF is and how it can help them in their business. So let me take a few moments and talk to you about question number one. We're going to do this. Uh, so the first question has to do with mappings. Um, we get this question kind of frequently, and it's it's a good question uh, because a lot of organizations have done mappings uh, to of their existing enterprise processes uh, to other models or frameworks. For example, uh, ITIL, uh, as this person asked, uh, also uh, in a specific industry. Uh, so, for example, the uh, Telecommunications Management Forum has the ETOM model. Uh, we have had people that have mapped to the ETOM model, and they want to see how the PCF maps to that. So uh, the short answer is that there are no detailed mappings between the PCF and any other framework. Just quite simply, there are none. Um, and the reason behind that is that uh, it's a huge maintenance effort for us. Um, the mappings change on a regular basis um, because the versions behind each of them change. And there really isn't a lot of value uh, for our members uh, or our partner organization members right now to justify creating these mappings and maintaining them over time. Now, that's not saying that we wouldn't do it or that we're not interested in looking for that kind of a thing. We just need to find something where there's enough value for our members uh, to support uh, spending the time and effort focusing on it. Uh, so right now, short answer is uh, no, we don't have any mappings uh, currently available. Question two, flowcharts. We get this question all the time, too, and I think that the, the core of it is sort of a misunderstanding of what the PCF is intended to do. So question basically goes, uh, I'm looking for a flowchart for uh, the particular process or for a cross-functional process or for a set of activities or something along those lines. Uh, and, and sort of a corollary to this question is, what are the inputs to this process? What are the outputs to this process? Can you give me some templates or some documentation uh, that has the details of it? And as of right now, nothing like that exists. Uh, we don't have any flowcharts. We're not hiding any uh, SIPOC diagrams or uh, any of the, that nature uh, in our knowledge base. Um, so even to our members, they, they don't have any content like this. And I'll explain a little bit why this is. So first, it's critical to understand that the origination, the intent originally of the PCF, was to provide a common language for benchmarking. And when it was in, envisioned, it became uh, sort of represented by, um, and represented really isn't the right word, it's that it was created by taking the frameworks and the process flows and the process models from the organizations that helped to design it originally, uh, and distilling from each of those the common activities uh, and the exception activities and the things that needed to be included to really truly define the scope of work to sort of answer the question, what happens in this process? So uh, the difference between the flowchart and answering the question, what happens in this process, is that the what happens in this process is simply just a list, whereas the flowchart is inherently contains flow. It shows the order of operations. It shows the relationship between elements. Uh, it shows how uh, conditions may be applied. Uh, and none of that logic exists in the framework. And it really isn't intended to, because the framework exists to answer the question, what is happening in this process? Not how is it happening, what comes first, what comes second, none of that. But really, truly, what is it that's in this particular process? And again, go back to the origination, the reason we created this, to, to provide some guidance on uh, doing benchmarking. You can sort of understand where that came from. So short answer here, no flowcharts. Uh, I hope you understand a little bit more about why flowcharts aren't available right now. Um, now, that being said, uh, we may choose to do flowcharts in the future. Uh, again, there's sort of a time value sort of a decision that we make when we get all kinds of requests like this. Would this help our members save time if we created it for them? Um, is there some value to having a flow chart? Does it help people understand better uh, what we're trying to communicate? And, and as of right now, we're still sort of on the fence about that. Uh, happy to hear some feedback from you and would love to make sure that uh, we're, we're understanding things correctly. Finally, definitions. Um, this You might recognize this from the first mailbag. Um, the reason I pull it up is that it really is a critical 
uh, thing for us and for our members. Um, not only that, but I, I bring it up again because I have some really exciting news to announce. Um, and, and you guys are getting kind of a sneak peek at this. Uh, we haven't officially launched as of today, uh, the end of July uh, 2014. But um, what we've done is we've actually upgraded the, the PCF experience, if you will. Uh, for a number of years, we released the PCF only in a PDF format. And then uh, shortly after that, maybe like in 2008, 2009, uh, we really hit hard with having a lot of different Excel versions out there. Um, we found that maintaining 15 plus Excel files with the consistency across them was very difficult, even with a database backend. Um, but we have now um, really upped our, our maintenance game uh, and, and now we have the ability to generate some really cool things. Uh, and one of those things is a very cool consolidated way of looking not only at the framework, um, but the changes between releases of the framework, the definitions that correspond to process elements in the framework, as well as measures uh, in APQC's open standards benchmarking and how they relate back to parts of the framework. So this is a very big win for us in terms of being able to give you content and show you how it all relates. So let me take a few minutes and go to the next slide. I'll show you what some of this looks like. This is the opening slide, uh, the opening sort of page that happens, you can see against very, very much uh, Excel, rows and columns and whatnot. Um, the thing to point out here is that it tells you the name of the industry, the version number, and if it's compared to one, it'll tell you exactly which version it's compared to down there kind of around row 23, 24. This is a sort of a high level index of all of the categories that are in the particular framework. Uh, and you can see the first three columns are de rigueur. This is stuff we give all the time. The real interesting thing comes at column D, E, and F. Uh, you can see column D, we've introduced a column called the difference index. Uh, this difference index is just simply a positive number greater than zero uh, that indicates the amount of change that happened in this category. So you can at a glance very quickly see that between two releases, a lot of the changes were focused in category 6.0. Relatively speaking, it was the second highest number of changes. The most number of changes came in category 12, develop and manage business capabilities. Um, again, that goes all the way down to the, the children, the, the lowest level of children uh, and all the lowest level of, uh, of descendants from this parent node here. The change details uh, describe simply what happened to the particular element you're looking at and the immediate children below it. So for example, in develop vision and strategy, you can see that we removed process element 10014 and we added in process element 17040. Now, you don't see the details of this here. This is the summary, um, but you see details as you go into the next uh, subsequent pages in the actual file. Now, why is this important? Well, a lot of people standardize on the PCF internally. Uh, and when a new version comes out, it's terrible. It's really a lot of effort to try and compare uh, version A to version B and say, oh, what changed here? Uh, I get all kinds of emails. John, you help me out. You know, we're, we're trying to upgrade, but there's a lot of differences. We don't know where to start. We got to spend hours and hours, got an intern, something along those lines. Big, big trouble, big effort for people. Uh, so we're trying to reduce that effort. Um, you can also see that uh, not only we're showing you uh, very simply adds and, and removes. We show you when things change. Uh, so if you look uh, at row 11, for example, uh, you can see we renamed this one, uh, but we kept the same number. So this change details and difference index, these two columns are, are critically important uh, for any kind of organization that's trying to uh, in incorporate the PCF into the work they do on a regular basis. Now, that being said, these two columns are only available to APQC members. Uh, so we, we do not allow uh, non-members to download a PCF that has those two columns in it. Um, the one that non-members get basically is everything that you're going to see here minus the difference index and the change details. Uh, and then finally, you can see column F, the metrics available. This is a flag that indicates whether or not we have a measure at that specific process element, not necessarily including all the children all the way down to the bottom. This is something we're working on though, but this tells you whether or not we have measures for that particular element. Now you can imagine this is very valuable as you're going through and looking at a framework trying to determine if it can help you benchmark, or if you're going to do a benchmarking exercise and you want to know what measures are there, you can pinpoint exactly what you're looking at very quick. Everything you need is in one file. So let me show you um, another great uh, example of, of an invention we had here, innovation we had here, excuse me, uh, glossary terms. This is what the, the original question was, as a matter of fact. Can you give me more details? Well, the answer is yes. 
Uh, and if you look at it here, you can see column C, all the little red tick marks on the top right-hand side. Those are all cells in which we have a glossary term. Uh, we actually put the glossary term in the comment there. Uh, this is sort of describing that process to a little more detail, and it's something that we update uh, as the PCF changes or as we get a little more uh, clarity or guidance from people. Now, um, this is not very usable in an automation fashion, or it's not very usable uh, if you want to see everything at once. Uh, so what we've done is actually incorporated it uh, into a separate worksheet itself, and you can see in the context of the process element ID, the hierarchy ID, the name of the element, and then the definition. But that's not all. There's actually this uh, worksheet that shows you the measures that are related back to the PCF. So uh, you can see in that sort of bottom graphic there, uh, we show you all of the measures that we've got in the open standard, and we tie them back to the PCF. We also give you the uh, category of the measure, so whether it's a process efficiency, cost effectiveness, cycle time, anything like that. Uh, and then also the formula, how we compute it. Now, we didn't muddy this with any of our standard APQC questions. So if you wanted to go and do this kind of benchmarking exercise on your own, uh, you have a very clear, easy to understand way to see how we compute this. Uh, in, in conjunction with the definitions, you should be able to do some really good high level benchmarking internally without too much effort. Uh, and then finally, you can see a units column just so you can understand exactly what we're we're giving you when it comes to those measures. Now these measures all correspond to uh, actual research that we've done in APQC's open standards benchmarking. So if you're interested in the actual data, I encourage you to participate in the open standards benchmarking. If you're not interested in participating, you can always come and use the benchmarking portal to get access to these measures and the data within them directly. Again, that's a member only benefit. Okay, uh, so that sort of closes it out. Oh, well, where can I get it? Sorry about that. Yeah, all this is available uh, starting now for our automotive framework. Uh, again, now is the end of July 2014. Um, we envision that within a year, all of our frameworks will be Excel enabled. Uh, we'll have a, a more official launch of this coming soon, but you can get the, uh, the Excel version of the automotive PCF now uh, by going to our website there. And that closes out this episode of the mailbag. Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, again, as usual, if you have any questions, shoot me a mail, hit me up on Twitter, uh, give me a phone call. Love phone calls. I don't talk to people very often these days. Give me a call. Talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.